Hello everyone, my name is Andy Hopper and I'm a Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. In this video, we're going to explore how existing applications running on Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, can take advantage of the new A1 ARM64 compatible instance types. To do this, we'll move an existing application that previously ran on Intel x86 instances over to A1. Until our announcement of the A1 instance types at reInvent 2018, customers were using Intel x86 processors for all of their workloads. This included lightweight applications that could easily scale out, such as web applications, containerized microservices, and so on. The A1 instances run on the new ARM64-based Graviton processor, which was custom-built by AWS and optimized for performance and cost. The benefit to our customers is that they can now take workloads that currently run on x86, target ARM64, and save up to 45% while keeping the ability to scale out when demand increases. So let's take a look at our candidate. What I have here is the eShop on web sample. This is an open source application published by Microsoft to demonstrate the ASP.NET Core platform. Now, in its original configuration, this application targets x86 processors, but one of the advantages of .NET Core is its ability to support multiple platforms. So let's take a look at what we would need to change to have it run on ARM64. So I have my command prompt here. Now, with .NET Core, use the .NET command line tool to compile your code. Uh, and you'd use command line like .NET build. However, there are additional options that you can pass on the command line, and one of those is used to indicate what processor architecture you want your code to target. So let's do that. I'll use the runtime identifier option, which is dash R, and tell it to target Linux running on the ARM64 processor architecture. Now, what this will do is now the compiler will rebuild my code, and instead of targeting the x86 instruction set, it's going to target the ARM64 instruction set. And that's all there is to it. That's great, but that's on the developer's machine. In the real world, we'd use a CICD pipeline to build our code. What I have here is a code pipeline CICD flow. For those of you who haven't used it before, code pipeline is just one of the DevOps services that AWS offers to help you build your own CICD pipelines. As you can see here, we offer source code control with code commit, build agents with code build, and deployment capabilities with code deploy. Now, if you already have tools you're using for CI/CD, you can still use them. We simply offer ours as a convenience. We do offer plugins and SDKs for popular CI/CD frameworks so that you can pick and choose the best tool for your environment, and we'll work with you to help get you where you want to go. So let's get back to my pipeline. This is a pretty simple workflow. I grab source code from code commit, which is our Git repository service. I build it in code build, which spins up a build environment, and it calls that .NET build command we were just looking at, and then it zips up the output. Then finally, we'll call code deploy, which will take the, that build package and deploy it to my EC2 instances. Now you'll notice in between the build and deploy, we've got a custom build step here. Uh, what this is doing is actually choosing which instance types I'm going to target for my build output. And what I'm using is a parameter that we're storing in Systems Manager Parameter Store to tell it which runtime identifier to pass on that command line. So let's go take a look at that. So if you aren't already familiar with this service, it's a simple and secure way for you to manage bits of information such as application configuration data or secrets that you wouldn't want to necessarily store as plain text in a configuration file or a database. In this case, I'm storing the value that I want to pass to that runtime option. And if we take a look at it, we'll see that the current value is set to target the Linux on the x86 with 64-bit extensions, or also known as x64, instruction set. Let's go ahead and modify that, and we'll tell it instead to target Linux running on ARM64. Now, it just so happens that I've got things set up so that a change to that parameter also restarts my build pipeline with that new value for the runtime identifier. Now, rather than make you guys sit there and wait for my entire build pipeline to complete while watching this video, I'm going to use the magic of video editing to save you some time, and I'll see you on... Alright, so our build pipeline has just completed, and let's take a look and see how our application got deployed to ARM64. What I have here are a couple of load balancers. The one set is in front of our x86 boxes, another is in front of our ARM64. So let's go ahead and navigate to the URL for the ARM64 load balancers. 
And look at that. It's the exact same web application, except now it's running on ARM64. Normally, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two environments. But if you look here at the bottom, I've left a little bit of an Easter egg where I've uh, indicated on the footer for the page what CPU architecture the application is running on. And look at that. It's running on ARM64. So this is great, but what about other runtimes? I mean, .NET's just one of many. Let's shell into my A1 box and let's find out. I'm using Systems Manager again here. It's got a cool feature called Session Manager where you can securely connect to your EC2 instances without having to expose SSH ports to the internet or set up bastion hosts for instances like these that are running in a private subnet. So let's go ahead and connect to one of my A1 boxes. What I've done is I'm running Ubuntu on the A1 instances just to ensure I know which ones are which. I'm currently, you can also run Amazon Linux on these as well, and what I'm doing is I'm currently running Amazon Linux on the x86 instances. Great, so now I'm connected to a console session on one of those A1 EC2 instances, <clears throat> and just because Bash is my favorite shell, I'm going to switch over to that, and then I'm going to CD to my home folder. All right, so let's try a few dif different runtimes. Uh, how about Node? Let's go ahead and make an index.js file. And let's add console.log hello world. And then we'll save that. So let's try it out. Node index.js. Hey, hello world. Awesome. How about Python? Let's go ahead and make a main.py. And we'll do an insert and we'll do print hello comma world oh no semicolons this is python all right save that and we'll do python main.py hey look at that hello world how about java we have net let's try another managed language so we'll do vi hello world dot java and we'll add a class we'll call it hello world we'll put a curly brace there We'll do a public static void main that takes a array of string args and let's do a system dot out oops dot out dot print line hello world and let's go ahead and save that we'll compile that code on the box itself we'll do hello world dot java Oh, great, no bugs in there. Let's go ahead and run our class. There we go. So, to summarize, moving your applications to the new ARM-based A1 instances really can be as simple as just ensuring you have the right runtime installed. Now, that's for interpreted languages, but even when using compiled languages, it's generally going to be a matter of selecting the correct processor architecture, which in many cases is simply a command line option. I hope this video helped illustrate how easy it is to move your applications over to A1, and I can't wait to see what you build on AWS. Thanks for watching.